All right. So last session, we covered heaven and hell. This week, we're going to go on to a little lighter topic, um, but also a very debated topic, um, which is creation. Uh, there's a lot of different views on it. So we're going to look at a couple of the different views, um, some of the pros and cons to them, and um, yeah, look at creation um, as it's explained in the Bible. So the introduction, we'll first talk about, yeah, just a bit about the topic, um, the importance of the topic, uh, then I'll just cover the three views, uh, and then I'll dive deeper into the different views. Um, well, I mean, there's, I think, about nine different views, um, but I'm going to kind of cover the, the more popular ones. Uh, and then we'll just discuss about um, creation, the seven days, and whether or not Genesis 1 and 2 are actually contradicting each other, um, and how they can work together. So this is very small. Um, so sorry for uh, Martina, that probably can't see this. However, this is kind of a list of um, different. Um, so there's two main views. There's going to be like the cre creationist view um, that says like creation is literal. And then there's the more um, the, the other views where creation is more of a um, uh, the the Genesis account is more of a like a poem or metaphor uh, or not literal, but um, you can see that there are uh, a lot of differences that kind of come into this place. So some of them are, for example, um, when the sun is created, land, um, rain, life, where life came from, um, death, um, civilizations, how they're formed. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of different topics, and I see that they're just two of the same ones. Um, there's a lot more. Uh, I'll send it in the group uh, later so you guys can maybe have a better look at it. Um, Martina, I'll email it to you, of course. Um, but pretty much um, with 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 creation, with cre the debate of creation, there there's two main camps, right? So there's the literal one and the one that takes it more meta uh, metaphorical. And there, over the past years, I mean, I've been in some like philosophy groups and stuff like that like this group this conversation has become very um it become a very hot topic you know there's not very much um leadway within the two views you're either believing it's literal um or you believe it's not um like the young earth kind of old earth if you um so it has gotten kind of heated recently um and yeah this which is very unfortunate, of course, because as believers, we should be able to talk about these topics um, in a civil way and not um, jump at each other's throats. Um, creation, however, is not a core doctrine within Christianity, right? So it's not necessarily um, detrimental to your salvation. So, you know, if someone believes, for example, in an evolutionary view of creation um, or a literal one, we can't say about the other, like, oh, they're not a Christian or they don't have faith, you know, like this is not, this is never the topic. Um, that we should like that's not the discussion we should be having but it's more about understanding the bible um because the view that we have on this topic has a lot of effects on other areas in the bible right so um you can for example think the the nature of god um his attributes how he controlled um creation can be different between the the views um, one might have more emphasis on showing his creativity and his emphasis on his presence within creation and his his I, um, his fingerprints on every part of creation, essentially, while the other view would kind of see more as God's sovereignty in controlling over natural processes. Biblical interpretations, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in the next slide, we'll look at some verses that um, if you want to change or depend on your view in Genesis, will change your understanding of these verses as well um the view on human identity and purpose can also be affected for example um us being created in the image of god what does that mean if you believe in, in for example an evolutionary view you know we kind of descend are descendant from monkeys fish etc so how are we then created in the image of god while the literal view might have a different interpretation for these things the problem of evil and sin in the world um Again, we'll look at that in a bit, but um, in, in Genesis, we learn about the fall of man being done through dece a deception of Satan, uh, a very literal interpretation of it. Um, but then if you don't hold to the literal interpretation, 
the sin entered the world maybe in a different way, and death would have also entered the world in a different way. Um, the salvation and the redemptive stories can also be slightly different. Um, of course, in Genesis, um, we are received. Uh, we received the prophecy of the Messiah that's to come. Uh, this is kind of the first mention of him, um, and you know the the fall of uh, mankind was a huge moment. While if death had always been in the earth, um, death wasn't such a shocking new revelation. Uh, gender roles and identity, transgender issues also can be affected by this part of by G Genesis um, and the creation story. Um, we read in Genesis, of course, that man, uh, God created uh, us man and woman or man and woman. Um, so this, if you take that literally, um, your gender identity can be different. There's also the roles that God has given us um, in the garden or gave Adam in the garden, um, which is, yeah. So these roles are also founded in there. Marriage um, is also a topic that's covered in the first chapters of the Bible. Um, and human sexuality is also covered because, um, yeah, based off of Genesis, marriage is between, or sex happens within marriage, which is between a man and a woman. Um, so these type of topics are all things that are affected by this view. Um, I'll actually just skip ahead to that point. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll skip ahead to this. So um, these are just some of the verses that I found. I didn't go into a too deep of a, a look at all the verses in the Bible, but this is some examples that, that I have here of um, if you change the Christian or how you interpret the creation accounts, will affect the ways that you view other verses, right? So um, we have, for example, in Hebrews, Colossians, and First Corinthians, um, it tells us how um, God was, how the world was created through the word of God, or how God was directly involved with in creation, um, kind of hands-on. But if you have a more evolutionary view of creation, God was a lot more um, passive, right? I mean, he was still involved in, in it, but he was less... Um, it wasn't necessarily his words that spoke things into existence. Um, Romans 5 talks about sin entering the world through Adam um, and death being a result of sin. However, if you don't believe in a historical Adam um, or the accounts that's given in the first books of Genesis, um, evolution needs death to happen, right? This is part of evolution. So this verse will also start having a different meaning. Jeremiah. Um, it's talking about the world being shapeless and formless, which is um, referencing to Genesis 1, uh, verse 2. Matthew 22, 21, and many other verses refers to man being created in the image of God. However, again, if we are evolved, then we can't really say that God intentionally created man, um, unless it was somehow through a very long process. Um, Timothy, 1 Timothy 2, um, 13 and 14, um, acknowledges that Adam was created before Eve and says that Eve was literally deceived by the serpent. Um, so Paul here seems to be referring to the events that happened in Genesis as literal events. Um, if it was just a poem or um, a metaphor, it, it's not necessarily a very good thing to root a um pretty controversial um, topic in, in the Bible. Um, revelations, I mean, Revelation links a lot to the beginning, to creation. Um, it's talking about the new heaven and the new earth being created, as we spoke about last week. Um, well, if you believe that heaven and earth were, or earth was evolved through millions of year, or billions of years, will this new heaven and new earth also be evolved over time? Um, and if God created it instantaneously, would he not be able to do that in the first instance as well? Um, and then we have, for example, Revelations, uh, which talks about restoring the earth to a pre-fall. So it talks about the Garden of Eden. Um, but if these aren't literal places, then these verses also don't make sense. So you have to find a different interpretation rather than the literal one. Uh, and then when it came to Satan, Ezekiel 28 um, talks about Satan in a pre-fall state, talks about him being in the garden, um, and, it talk, and it links his fall to the events that happened in Genesis. So these type of verses also, 
well, you have to interpret differently because it doesn't really make sense to be talk saying like, oh, and you walked in the garden um, if that garden never existed. So take two jumps back. Um, I'll just quickly explain um, the different views. So there is the old earth creation. Uh, this is kind of more, um, I think an umbrella term over all of the other views um, or, or uh, over the views like um, the evolutionary one, um, which is mentioned here. There's also like the gap theory. Um, it kind of uh, asserts that the earth and the universe were much older um, and typically aligned with like the scientific um, estimations of billions of years. Um, they would interpret the creative account less literal and more symbolic. Um, they would like lots of them would say that the words day um, in Genesis are a long period of time, uh, not literal days. Um, so that allows like maybe a few where, for example, over during this day, which is millions of years, this happened, like this evolved or this grew. Um, I mean, it, it, like I said, it includes like evolution. So there's like the Big Bang Theory um, and, and the Gap Theory, which is a view that's between Genesis 1.1 and Genesis 1.2. Lots of things happened. Um, I'll, I'll show you a picture and describe that in a little bit later, but this is part of that view. Then there's the evolutionary or theistic evolution view, um, which pretty much just follows evolution um, as is kind of taught in school or in, in, in science. Uh, this view didn't really exist previously, and this is a very new view that's only been around for like a past hundred years, really when the evolution um, um, theory started becoming more popular. So lots of theologians um, or um, Christian thinkers started feeling the need to um, incorporate science and creation, like how to connect the two. So they kind of said that, um, you know, God used the process of evolution to um, uh, bring everything into existence. Uh, this view does, however, kind of differ from the the old Earth. Like I said, old Earth is more of a umbrella term because for like the evolutionary um, view, they kind of believe like everything is evolved, right? So everything evolved from nothing uh, into humans. While there are views within the old Earth creationism um, that would say, for example, that humans were at some points created, right? So over thousands millions of years things were happening and then god created earth humans so there's a lot of different views when it comes to that but it, they all normally take a bit more of a loose view to um genesis one and then there's the young earth uh creationists which i think is what most people um here would agree with uh, and this kind of just states that the earth was created in a literal 24 uh, uh six times 24 um hours um they yeah this is just based off the literal interpretation of the biblical events um that are explained in genesis and other places um yeah so I'll just jump back to here uh so when it comes to like the new or the young earth i think a lot of us agree with this view um as it's kind of this the simplest view within scripture um, however, there are, of course, uh, criticisms to this view um, from opponents uh, or supporters of the old Earth view. So they would sometimes argue that the structure of Genesis 1, um, that it is, it's like some type of like, it's more poetic. Um, if, you, if you look at the structure in the original text, uh, Genesis 1 is written in a very um structured way right there's the sevens uh and then it's set, um the way that things are phrased like let there be and then god said uh and that's more they would say that or the opponents would more say like this is more of a emphasis that god had um command and power over creation right but that, that he's not literally doing it but really the only or the main criticism against the literal approach is well, they would say that um, science doesn't agree with it, but there's very little that's atheistic that 
would agree with the Bible. So that's not necessarily a, a big shock. But the other view, again, is the way that Genesis 1 is written, which personally, I don't think is a very good argument, because just because something is written in a poetic or like in a very structured way, doesn't make it not literal, right? You can write a literal um a literal um narrative in a very structured way because this almost proves more of how much god is in control right it's like it's the way that it's written is mirroring how sovereign god is which i i would argue is even more proof of it being a literal thing as opposed to being a um metaphor <clears throat> so yeah there aren't for from what I've seen, I mean, you can always go into the debate. There isn't that many strong arguments that I would say are opposed to the young view um, within young young Earth. Um, there's also like, for example, creationist, uh, scientific creation, creation, sorry, scientific creationism, um, which are people that would argue, of course, for the literal interpretation of the Bible um, and reject the concept of, for example, macroevolution, which is like kinds evolve from other kinds so like monkeys evolve into humans um and they argue that a lot of the historic or scientific um findings such as fossils um or maybe like geological formations like the layers in the dirt um can easily be explained by a flood um that caused rapid rapid progression within the um formation of the earth right and this is an event that's explained in genesis 11 um, of a of a, a, world, uh, a worldwide flood so there are scientists um that would agree with the young earth view um there is for example creation uh dot com or creation.org that um they have a lot of resources about um creation and science from the perspective of a young earth um view so it's creation.com i find that they are uh in like the in like when it comes to the debate the young earthers are very bullied by um old earthers because the old earthers will say that science is on their side and therefore they think they have some type of uh, intellectual upper hand However, I think I find that this approach is actually very much proving the Bible even more because the Bible says um, that God makes the wise fools um, or the people that have earthly wisdom. He makes them into fools um, because, yeah, if you look at the Genesis and take it literally, it doesn't make sense when it comes to evolution, right? Like evolution and the creation events aren't compatible which is also an argument that the young earth have against the old earthers, um, which will We'll talk about too um so for me i personally agree with the young earth view um i i believe that um what's written in the bible is is, is literal uh when it comes to this account and um when i when i look at the evidence um in earth or of the earth like science um like carbon dating and stuff like that it's not very accurate um it's constantly changing uh, even atheistic scientists would say that the method used for carbon dating and stuff like that isn't an accurate process so i don't believe that we should try to bend scripture to fit science um because science isn't even correct on these topics it's all also theories um and they're just trying to find a way to disprove creation because again if you believe that the world was created you have to believe that it was created by something or someone which will force you to accept that there is a god um that exists some form of god of course um so this is a very uncomfortable for the people that oppose it so they will do whatever they can to disprove this view so another one mentioned before was the um, old earth view so um, a lot of the um, a lot of the reasons why people have this view is because of science, you know, um, in schools, it's being taught in a lot of places, um, in movies, it's presented a lot, um, as just, this is the way that it is. Um, but I think a lot of, very few people actually look into the complete impossibility of this, of science or of evolution. 
however, the Christians that hold to this view would argue that it's God causing these things, right? Like, if you look at the mathematical chance of this earth even existing, it's impossible. So they would say that this is evidence of God being involved, right? The Christians that hold to the old earth view um, won't um, say they won't agree with like the Darwinic view, right? That God didn't have anything to do with it. They always say that God had something to do with it. However, there are opposed or there are problems with this view, mainly just the biblical interpretation, right? The Bible clear seems to clearly states that um, the earth was created in six days. In other parts of the Bible, this is referred to. Uh, an example is the Sabbath. Um, in, in Exodus, when this, the laws are given, the Sabbath is given based off of God resting on the seventh day, and therefore man should rest as well. But if God didn't literally rest on the seventh day, why is this then a why is this then become a command, right? Um, historical Christian consensus, again, like I said, historically speaking, Christians never had a view of evolution um, being the way to God that this this text was interpreted. It was always a literal view, um, theological implement. In, uh, implement implications um you know the, the the issue of death of sin the fall um this brings a lot of problems um i've tried to talk to um i have some friends that are old earthers but i find it very hard to actually get them to stay on topic and talk about these things um they they don't really talk about it um it's possible that someone in the comments is now going to educate me uh, if they actually watch the recording um but yeah again a, another problem is the um, authority of scripture um which would say like well if the accounts in genesis isn't meant to be taken literal in a book i mean genesis is book is written as a historical book right it's read as as a book that just describes events that happened if we can't take this as a, as literal, what else can we start moving with? And this is what I see also within the old earth, where it's not just Genesis 1 anymore or Genesis 2, but Genesis 1 through 11. So um, uh, the flood, everything between the, the fall, uh, the division of the language with the Tower of Babel, everything before that point is kind of um, not literal anymore. So this whole chunk of Genesis, almost a third of Genesis has been moved from literal um, reading to, um, yeah, not literal anymore. Um, and this brings a slippery slope of where else are we going to start taking things out of its um, literal text, right? Will we take Revelations? Will we take that literal? Will we start changing that as well? Um, Book of Daniel, uh, and lots of other things will then start being, um, the, the authority of this scripture can then start being questioned. Uh, there's a gap few. Um, so there's a couple of different interpretations that I found in this, but essentially what it goes off of is that between Genesis 1-1, which says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and Genesis 2, where it continues, a whole age happened. So there was... Um, Life was created, so it's kind of, that just summarizes, that first verse summarizes an original earth, and then when it says it was, it was, um, the earth was formless and void, it's kind of des describing um, the result of the first earth, so, um, um, yeah, so, like, God created animals, created I don't know if he created humans, but he just created life and there was vegetation and all that stuff. And then the fall happened of Satan. He fell down to earth, kind of destroyed creation, um, causing it to become um, shapeless and, and void. And then Genesis 2 and 3 then start picking up on, then God started re- structuring reforming um, recreating the earth into the age that we are now living into in um obviously one of the main criticisms here is there's no scriptural backing for this there's no um um there's nothing in scripture that talks about this the argument that i think they come with is um well there's two the first one is 
they use this view as this is why there's like dinosaur bones found deep within the earth, right? So um, these dinosaurs died um, and then God created a world on top of it. And this is why we find dinosaurs and oil and lots of things in the deeper layers, uh, which again can easily be explained with a, with a flood uh, account. Another one is that they argue that the day, the word day doesn't literally mean day. Um, this is just referring to a period of time. However, in the um, in the Bible, whenever the word day is used, followed by a numeric qualifier, so first day, second day, or day one, day two, it always means literal day. It, there are times when it's like, you know, these are the days of or in these days. That then means a, a period of time, um, like we are living in the end times or end days. Um, this is referring to a period of time. However, it is never, those ages are never followed by a number. Um, so these two main points really just the fact that there's no scripture for it, the fact that the word day followed by numerator means a literal date throughout scripture makes this view very unpopular these days. It used to be more of the view that they had before evolution um, came. I think lots of the people that um, don't want to take the literal uh, approach to Genesis have kind of moved towards the more um, evolutionary uh, view. Which brings us to this one. Um, it's not very compatible with scripture, again. Um, Historic, the historical view on creation also doesn't really fit um, the problem of death and suffering. Um, in, evol in the evolutionary view, death and su suffering are a necessity. Um, they are part of the way that things have always been. Um, so th there, is, there shouldn't really be a problem with it, which is clear, of course, in scripture that there is a problem with death and sin and suffering and stuff like that. This is signs of a corrupt world however for them it's always been there um yeah and it just doesn't work um the um, also within this view it comes to the divine actions and interventions of god god seems to have a very passive approach to things he seems to just let things happen um very inattentionally. I mean, of course, he could have known that eventually a human would evolve, um, but it doesn't. It doesn't. There's no link to the intentionality of God with that we read about the Bible, right? In the Bible, we see that God has a plan for creation. He knew thing what would happen before the earth was even created. Um, the question of the image of God is also a problem, right? Because we are created in God's image. But at which points? I mean, when we were monkeys, were we God's image? Um, are we now in God's image? Or will we continue to evolve and then we're actually in God's image? What is God's image? Which we'll actually talk about next week in the doctrine of God. Um, but this view doesn't really have any concrete answers um, that, that I could find. I mean, there are answers, but they're not consistent with the rest of scripture. Because when, when you look at like the other passages I showed, it suddenly changes um, a lot. Uh, and this is why, for me, um, taking into account the book of Genesis and the narrative uh, and all these things, I uh, believe in a literal six-day period. Um, I think this is the most straightforward way of reading the biblical text without having to try to jump through um, different loops. Um, one of my old teachers uh, in Bible school used to say, if the plain sense makes, if the plain sense makes common sense, don't seek any other sense, which just says like, you know, if this is the clear explanation of something, you don't have to start looking and inventing things. Um, and I also think it's a very poor practice for us to try to change scripture to appease the secular world. You know, if, even if we try to use science to prove creation um they're still going to make fun of us for believing in jesus you know like this 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 topic is never going to be what's going to convince them um and if you believe in a, in a god that saved you um like the, and made you who you are and, and and saved you and you can have that faith that having faith that god created this world isn't a big stretch um 
but yeah, looking at the creation events, uh, I think most of us know what happened within the creation, but I'll just go through it. Um, on the first day, God created light uh, and separated from darkness. Um, I, the creation of light happened far before the creation of the moon, the stars, and the sun, which happened on the fourth day, kind of suggesting that light uh, on the first day was um, possibly divine. Like it shows that God doesn't need light. Uh, this could have also been um, in, in a lot of religions, the sun god is a very popular god, like in Egypt. Um, Egyptian religion, uh, Ra, um, is a very is a very high god. Um, in the Aztec religion, God, or the sun god was also very popular. Even in spirituality these days, the sun is a very popular god. Um, however, I believe that God created the world and and created light without it to sh prove that He is the source of all these things and that He doesn't need creation to do these type of things. Um, and you, people might argue like, well, you know, if there's no sun, how can you have the first day and the first night? However, the only thing you really need to have a day and a night is light and the rotation of the earth, right? If the earth rotates once, it's still going to go through darkness if the light's coming from one angle of it. Um, so God can still say there's a day and a night. On day two, um, God separated the waters, um, creating the skies above, uh, above the waters. Um, which then was called the firmaments. One of the really cool um, concepts um, was to believe that the the firmament that's above the sky was actually um, like a solid, like ice bubble that was kind of um, around the Earth, protecting it from um, the rays from the sun, like that we have nowadays with like the the um, UV rays. This this was being protected by the waters. Um, again, I can go on a really deep rabbit trail. Um, Dr. Kent Hoven, back I think in the in the in the nineties or something, talked a lot on this topic about how um, um, his he had a he had a theory on what the Earth looked like before the fall, um, and this this firmament was was there. However, um, during the flood, all this water came crashing down onto the Earth, um, causing the worldwide flood and causing yeah, lots of environmental changes, which is why our world is not the same as it was um, back then. Uh, day three, uh, God created the seas and the dry land, so he brought the land up um, um, out of the water, uh, and he, he caused the vegetation to sprout, which included plants and trees uh, that produced seeds and, and fruits and vegetables. Um, and another interesting thing about this thing is that God created the greens before the sun. Uh, of course, the light of the earth is used for photosynthesis and, and used to grow plants and feed plants. However, if there's no sun, um, this kind of shows that it was uh, God that was the ultimate source of life for these plants during this time. Then on day four, he creates the sun, the moon, and the stars um, to govern over the day and the night. I think, yeah, this is a this is also a very interesting um, thing. I that I didn't realize. I mean, I when I went to Bible school, I I learned it. I actually read this, and I was like, wait a second, where's the sun? And then day four, it comes up. So all these things that happened before didn't have any day and sun. So again, when it comes to your view of this text, if you just believe, okay, the days are just a period of time. Like, um, you know, day one is a million or a billion years. Day two is a billion years. Day three is a billion years. Um, well, then on day four, if that's when the earth or the, the sun and the moon and the stars were created, how did all those other things survive during those billions of, sorry, billions or millions of years? Um, it just doesn't, it, like this this line here would disprove this view instantly unless you would say the Bi the Bible is wrong, right? this was written incorrectly um but then you open a whole other can of worms and trying to um because then you're essentially disproving the inerrancy of scripture um day five god filled the waters with um with living creatures like fish and sea um the the, the word creatures here used um can refer to very large animals as well which could even refer to like um 
like the megalodor, like there are there are there's um, fossils and skeletons found of humongous animals. Um, these could have existed during this time as well, and of course died out over the past thousands of years due to um, environmental changes. Um, and then day six, God creates um, land animals, creates livestock. Um, and creates human beings, male and female. This all happened on the sixth day, kind of showing the um, the apex or the climax of creation, um, showing that there is like a, a building up. There's there's a lot of um, a lot of uh, um, symbolism that's used in this in this verses um so much so of course that some people don't believe that it's literal because like wow there's just so much symbolism here um however it uh, i believe again that this shows that since humans were created last um it shows that that we were his crown jewel right this is also mentioned throughout scripture that we were his um final goal again like i mentioned with the angels and demons session there is no mention of when angels were created um we just know that they were um but we don't know when there's no mention of it within the creation accounts um probably because this more talks about the physical um material world that's created and not about the spiritual stuff um, but these are questions we can ask god when we're in heaven uh day seven is the day that god rested um he declared it holy and set apart for a day um now of course we know it's the sabbath uh as the sabbath um this rest was not because God was tired somehow or he needed to take a nap like we do. Um, this just shows that he was done with his work and that it was complete, right? There was no more creating that was done after this point. He had created the world and everything that he needed. Um, yeah, and he encouraged us to rest as well um, in his presence. So, you know, thanks to God, we have weekends. Oh, sorry. So. One of the things I want to bring out is um, Genesis 1 and 2 can seem like a contradiction, right? We have in Genesis 1 that things happen on a certain day or order, and then Genesis 2 seems to throw that whole order out the window and then um, say everything happened differently. However, um, if you close, if you examine this text closer, you'll see that the, the views actually um, are complementary. The two chapters are complementary. Um, Genesis 1 is showing a structural overview, um, over um, showing the, the orderliness of God's creative acts, or acts, while well, Genesis 2 focuses on more specific details, um, particularly on the creation of humans um, and establishing the Garden of Eden. Um, in, in Genesis 1, we see the, um, patterns of divine commands um, corresponding with actions of creation, highlighting like the formation of lights, land, vegetation, um, the creation of humans. While in Genesis 2, it shows us more intimate view of things, focusing on the creation of Adam uh, and Eve, and then placing them in the, in the gar uh, sorry, creation of Adam, placing him in the garden, and then the creation of Eve. Um, so you kind of have to see it as um, God's kind of focusing in on the topic so um he's he's the, the the writer is showing okay this is all what that happened right it's just like an overview of um zero to 100 but now let's zoom in on the last part of it where um we see god creating adam and then he creates a special garden um puts adam in it and then he starts creating things kind of to show to adam look what i can do look what i've done look who i am um, he creates animals for um, not saying like, the, so when he says that he creates animals and presents them to Adam, this is just showing like, while there, God is creating the animals and showing him to Adam and then Adam can name each one, um, ultimately realizing, of course, that he doesn't have a partner. And then God creates Eve. Um, and still, all of this is happening on the sixth day. And then at this point, the whole garden is made. This is the... Um, yeah, so this is why they don't contradict. Um, this also happens in other parts in scripture it, when it comes to um, the Tower of Babel. Um, this also happens, like it, it shows you like a general, like, okay, this is all the things that's happening. Okay, now let's focus on a certain point. And it doesn't like um, 
um, yeah, it doesn't contradict. It's just kind of a shift in tones of, okay, now this has happened. And then Genesis chapter three is kind of continuing on like, okay. Um, and then these events happened. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my, um, my pitch, um, my, my view, again, I just wanted to point out there are different views when it comes to creation. Um, I believe, of course, that one of them is the truth and the other ones are more of a, um, an attempt for Christians to appease the secular uh, intellectuals to make them happy. Um, however, evolution um, cannot, uh, evolution and creation account just can't work together. There's no way that th these work. Um, there's lots of debates on it. Um, Living Waters also has some talks about this um, stuff. Answers in Genesis also um, talks a lot about this topic. Creation.com, also a really good resource to learn more about these things. Um, and yeah, uh, I think we also as Christians have to be careful with how much we let the secular world cause doubt right so i mean satan's going to try to cause us to doubt in any way possible and creation is no exception he he's going to use a view like evolution make it super popular um to try to make us doubt the accuracy of the bible the legitimacy of the of text um and if we are already questioning the first chapter in the bible it's going to it can lead us to question every single other chapter um in the bible um but these views are fundamentally flawed and have a consequence on lots of other scriptures. So I would also encourage you this week um, when you're reading your Bible to sometimes just look at where um, scripture is referring to uh, the creation um, and just take time to think about it, to be like, okay, what is my understanding of this? Um, so that I have a, a, um, a coherent interpretation of the whole scripture right we shouldn't try to script um interpret part one uh, in one way and then part two in another way in part three in another way we need to have a concept con and um trying to think of the word um um uh, coherence um view of these texts um yeah and one of the things again with Genesis one and two, they don't contradict each other. It might seem like that if you just quickly read over things, but it is just focusing in on what happened on day six. Um, and it's not two different accounts. So I'm hoping that just these points can help you kind of have some confidence in the, in scripture more. Um, that's yeah. When you read Genesis one, it just points to the glory of God. Right. As I said, in the first session, that's what it's all about. The, the Bible wants to amplify God and glorify him. And I believe that God creating everything in such a unique way is um, the most glorifying, right? Just being able to create everything out of nothing just by his spoken word is the ultimate sign of power, I believe. Um, and also when it comes to revelations and the new heaven and new earth that will be created, um, I believe that we can... Uh, have faith that this is how God will do it again. He will just speak um, and everything will obey his command. And we won't have to sit and wait for 5 billion years while everything is forming slowly. We can um, be in his presence instantaneously um, and enjoy uh, fellowship him for the rest of our lives. With that, I want to thank you guys for, well, girls, for joining um, this week. Next week, we'll be talking about the doctrine of man. Um, kind of looking at who man is, um, how, why we are created, what our purpose is, um, what it means to be created in the image of God. And um, yeah, we'll cover some other topics. So thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. And I will stop the